Let's talk about some market crashes and some investing strategies. What's up, folks? It's me again, Stefan. Welcome to All Coin Picks. For those that are new, welcome to our channel. It's been a week since I've made my last video, and a lot has happened. We had some wonderful days where the bulls were in control. The market was feeling great, and I, I have to say, if you're not if you're not used to the to what happens with with the feeling of the bulls being in control. Chances are now, every time there is any push like that, you have to expect that correction coming. And and I think what happened yesterday, especially especially because I'm from the U.S., and when it crashes, it feels so bad because you're asleep. And and I I was lucky enough that before I had gone to sleep, I had closed a lot of my trade positions, and I was able to save a lot of heartache when i woke up this morning and i saw everything bleeding just in that little swing alone i there was a 12 maybe 15 percent room for profits just on just a matter of hours <laughs> this is amazing if you think about it if you're just investing chances are you should get used to this by now and not worry about these small fluctuations and if you're trading maybe you need to practice or or be more diligent in, in taking advantage of these swings because that's why so many hedge funds and, and more and more investors are getting into this market. It's because of the volatility. It's what makes this market so profitable. Sure, hodling is a good strategy, but I think it is an incomplete one. But to each their own, if, if for example, if you two weeks ago had purchased any coins chances are you I, I, since then you already made some serious gains so if you take advantage of the right time to purchase that's also something i usually like to do i don't often trade every day most of the time i'm doing research everybody needs to find what they're comfortable with and i think if you get too comfortable in this market it teaches you a lesson. So the more lessons you, you can take from this market, the better you get. And if you're new to this, maybe there is a lot you can learn what are true videos, true being part of a community. There is so many ways you can learn and I'm gonna try to teach you a few tips in investing since I'm not really that experience of a trader just because I actually don't like it as much. And I'll get you guys in a little bit of news about my my Eater wallet, also known as Mew. So recently, my Eater wallet was a target of a DNS attack. And what happens with a DNS attack is if you go on Google and you search for the correct my Eater wallet, the website was replaced by a phasing website where whatever activity you're making there you're open yourself to the possibility of your funds being hacked or sent to the incorrect address so keep in mind that even after that type of visit attempt this section right here the ssl section will also show as insecure there are there are many layers of safety to any activity you do Mu, as up to date, is a unhackable way to get access to your cryptocurrencies. It does not store any information besides of what you provide it. So keep in mind, you're responsible for, your, for the safety of your cryptocurrencies. I personally use a hardware wallet. That might be something that you want to invest your time and money into. They, me website also have a few tips about how to prevent yourself from being scammed or fizzed. I will suggest for you guys to look at that. The attack was very short lived, was about $150,000, but the amount of FUD because of this event was so huge. Lots of folks are still waiting to get some of the clarity about me being safe to be used again. Do make your own research about security i'm 
I'm going to move on to the next step. But keep in mind, Mew is a very safe way for you to access your cryptocurrencies. And you're the only one responsible for protecting your assets. So a lot of folks on our channel are asking, why is the market crashing? And you can check out a lot of videos on YouTube. You can ask a few questions around on social media and you will form a consensus as to why the market is crashing. But I, what I really like to know, which a lot of people forget to ask is, what type of crash are we looking at? Did it happen because it was just over bar conditions? Was it a price rejection after hitting all time high twice? Was it caused by FUD? And if you get this answer, you can kind of get a better gauge at what you should do or if you should be buying this dip. There is a huge difference in what you should do if the market is going into a long-term correction or if it, this is just Bitcoin needing some time to cool down for a bit. If you look at the chart, and this is not even any financial advice it has only barely corrected that last candle it just seems that it tells itself what is going on but what i like to talk a little bit is what kind of strategy i usually tend to follow when i'm doing investing something really important you need to learn while you're trading or investing is you need to know your emotions and your limitations i tend to believe that if you're trading with your emotions you're not doing anything besides gambling also when you're trading it requires a lot more knowledge and time so you got to figure out which one suits you best i'll be even bold enough to say that the best strategy for most people is to buy and hold an asset and the moment they learn how to do that, and a lot of people will think that that's easy, to buy and hold will be to take advantage of the next step up, which will be to take advantage of the volatility. So if you're investing in a cryptocurrency or in a ICO, the first step you must do is to do your own research. And... Finding projects that have a very solid foundation and analyzing the risks at the time of purchase. Who is behind the project? Has the team delivered something tangible in the past? If you read the white paper, does, does it make sense? Do you understand it? What problems do they solve? Who is backing it? Whether if it's a partnership or a well-known existing client. You know, during an ICO, it's, it's when there is most room for profit, but at the same time, the most risk of you being in a scam or the projects just dying out, which will happen a lot in this market. You know, it, it's much better when you get into a well-traded cryptocurrency because it has a lot less risk, but normally there's a lot less room for profit. You know, you always got to understand that take notes of when you buy into these cryptocurrencies as well, because sometimes... A lot of people get confused between what was the SAT value, what was the USD value. A lot of people don't keep track of that and they end up realizing later on that they are up in USD value, but then they're lower in Bitcoin. So that's also one of the things you should do. You should have it written down somewhere, whether if it's a you know, Google Sheet, or if you just write it down in a book, do keep notes of all these transactions. Also make sure to avoid building bad habits before they, tur they turn into second nature. And I'm gonna list a few of these habits which normally most new investors or traders end up getting into. One will be investing or trading into something they don't believe or understand that just should explain itself um, second will be purchase an entire position in one transaction I will always advise to dollar cost average in any position 
especially if it will be in a long-term position or at least find, find an entry point that is very deep resistant. Third will be to not invest a large portion of your funds into only one asset. I mean, you could invest it all in Bitcoin since it is the strongest asset. But if you're going to invest in any other cryptocurrency, it's always best to mitigate risk. So if you devise a strategy where you have a set number of coins, your portfolio will be dip resistant. This one is catch. This one, this other habit will be over trading. A lot of folks get stuck on over trading because they see so much stuff out there going up and down, so much fluctuation, so many gains and so many losses that you're going to be interested in being in all of them. I suggest to learn how to curb your trading. And the last one doesn't seem that a lot of folks won't do it, which will be using leverage and shorting as a means of gambling. Gambling is a very, very tricky addiction because it sounds harmless and most of us have heard that you should only invest what you're willing to lose and since you already thought about that idea, maybe you can lose it all while gambling. So do keep an eye on your, in your gambling because cryptocurrencies are not a means of gambling. I also would, would, would also would imagine that if if you're going to place any position to identify in the chart if your point of entry is solid enough so that you can you can be confident to be in it even in a bear market you always have to think about these the, the, these events because if you just look at the chart of bitcoin and the amount of times that it's crashed you you if you had the patience to wait, even as, as long as six months, which will feel a year in crypto, is price will retrace back. And it's just better to wait or dollar cost average into your position. So keep those in mind. Some quick tips that I will say is if, if you were planning to buy something that has just hit the market and has gone several percent after it's been listed, chances are that that isn't a safe time to place a long-term position. Purchase a coin that has not undergone a correction could be a recipe for disaster. There are trading tools such as the Fibonacci levels, but what it seems to work best for me are Bitcoin pullbacks. It, it also, I would also look for a lack of liquidity or a price movement because if there is nothing going on, that means people are not willing to buy or sell. So maybe that would be a good time for you to place a small position and something that you're planning to hold for long periods of time. I would also use RSI, which is a good indicator of a market condition. If, if it is 70 plus, I'll consider it overbought. While if it's 30, I'll be considering it oversold. This might be a good indicator for, for to help you decide what you should do in the long run. Also, I can go a lot more into detail about a few other tips, but I'll keep them simple for the sake of the video. Download something like portfolio, sort of a portfolio tracker. That way you can keep a track of the volatility. I know it can be enticing to keep looking at it all the time. Most people will have it on their phones. I don't usually carry it with me. I only update myself once a day because I don't really care much for the fluctuations. I do care about news, so I do follow a lot of news from Twitter or Facebook. I follow a few YouTubers. That's something you should look into also. Learn some strategies to dollar cost average your investments, and more importantly, to take profits from the best performers and place those profits in the least performance a lot of people forget that and they start rejecting their coins thinking that they are that were poor investments they sell them out and that is the exact moment that the the opposite happens also have a strategy for each currency it could be based on their roadmap because trust me roadmaps are quite important a lot of people buy the rumor and sell the news because it, there is a lot to do there is a lot 
in this market that is correlated with a market cycle. And also separate profit, separate profits and create a Bitcoin portfolio every time you, you take profits out of your coins. This will lower your risks and it will slowly teach you about balancing all, all the risks and branching out to new investments. Because if you're only hodling, what will happen is if there is any issue with the coin and best perform, I can I can even give you examples of coins like Biconnect, which were obvious scams, but people have had so much of their portfolios in, in coins like Biconnect, Centra, that just were scams and their coins totally lost value in the market you don't want to be stuck in coins like that if you have your portfolio diversified chances are you're going to be dip resistant and you're going to have a little loss but it's not going to be in your entire portfolio i hope this video helps i know it's a little lengthy hope you guys enjoyed this video there is so many tips about investing i hope you guys if you guys have any other tips, just let me know. I'm always learning. I always like to share whatever I learn about this market. If you guys have any comments, any critics, just hit the comments down below. If you guys like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.